Hello, it's Melinda from Scrapbooking and Craft and welcome to the Great Australian Craft Show. What is Christmas without baubles for Christmas trees and personalised ones at that? So I am a laser cutting business for all the newbies that don't know and I can personalise things. So I actually make these products right in my house in country Victoria. So that gives me a lot of ability to change to... Um, adapt and personalize a lot of things so this year i've decided to re-release our christmas baubles these were released several several years ago um, but i've decided to do a re-release of them so the christmas baubles come with any name you like so on the website there'll be an option where you can type in whatever name you like boys girls you could just do a word you could do a family name you could do a place you could do basically anything just bear in mind if the word is more than six um, characters long the word does shrink down to be smaller um, but I do my best to make it look nice and if it is a longer word I will contact you and show you pictures of what it's going to look like um, I may stretch it up to be taller it's six letters seems to work really well for names that are not six letters um, <laughs> it's a bit more tricky but we get there so there's a few different ways you can order them you can order just the name you can order the name with a backing piece so you can put them together. This would make a fantastic shaker. May do that as a project soon. Probably not for this craft event. Um, being in lockdown, it's hard to get out and get supplies. And I'm missing a few supplies to do the shaker, um, shaker things. Like I was missing a photo to do this project with, but I found something that uh, works. So you can buy them with the name, with the backing, and then you can buy some wings to go on them. So the wings are really cool. So they sit on like that. Then the option is you can take the name away and you can just buy a round one. So this round one is great to add your own photo. Um, you can add other memorabilia into there. What we're going to do is today we are going to show you simply how to decorate the name one. This would look fantastic on your tree. We can even look at adding a year down here. Um, so certainly let us know how you'd like them personalised. Um, if you can't find an option on the website you'd like you'd like something a little different don't hesitate to email me and ask the worst I'll say is no no harm done most of the time it's yes just got to watch with trademark we don't infringe on that but mostly we're good so what we're going to do today is I'll show you how to decorate one of the names so this will just hang on my Christmas tree my daughter's name is Alexis so I've just heat embossed that and put some pattern paper behind it and then I'm going to show you how I've made this beautiful little angel fairy so this image here has just come from a postcard that I found in my stash. I could have put a photo of my daughter in here. I could have put a piece of pattern paper from a paper pad. Um, I just like the postcard, so I decided to go with this. This piece would actually make a great um, memorial or remembrance for someone that's no longer with you for Christmas or perhaps um, a baby or a child that's no longer with you for Christmas. That would be great to put on the Christmas tree to remember them. And I just like the wings. I think they're really, really cool. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make this piece today too. I could have taken off this um, cherub and actually put my daughter's name on the top. So that would look equally as cool as well. Probably not in the same colours, but you get the general idea. So these baubles are quite personalised and you can change them around to be a lot of different things. So to start with, we're going to start with the word Alexis. So these are made out of 3mm MDF. So all these pieces come in the 3mm MDF and it's a lot stronger. Obviously the word's quite thin, thinly cut. So it is quite fragile. You do have to be careful with them. Um, if your word is a lot longer, it'll shrink down, uh, be a little smaller, but I'll probably um, raise it up a bit. So I'll make it... Um, I'll make it work. We can even put a year down the bottom. So these are made out of 3mm MDF, so they're made to be a lot more sturdy as off-the-page projects. If you'd particularly like them cut out of chipboard, like the normal 1.8mm chipboard we use in scrapbooking, say you want to use this on a scrapbook page or um, you want to use it on a card, you can uh, request them being made out of the thinner, the thinner material. It's the same price. It doesn't matter which material you get it done out of. So what we are going to do is we're going to get started with this one, enough chatting. So all the details to order these are on the website in the different combinations. So you can go and pick what combination you would like. So to start with, 
when you're picking pattern paper for this, I'll just grab the paper pad that I used, you're wanting your name to stand out. So you're wanting to find a pattern paper that won't detract from the name. So for example, if I went and put it on something like this one, your, your background paper and your name is really sort of fighting each other. Um, equally doesn't really look good on that one. So you've just got to be a bit careful with what you're selecting. Um, these images would look awesome on a bauble. You could even actually use one of the Christmas ones. Oh, they're a bit small. Probably have to go to the bigger paper pad. Um, you could actually one of these would look really cool. See, I could use this one and have the bird in the background, which would look quite nice. Again, your name will be a little bit more distracted if you go for something that's busy in the background. So just bear that in mind. I'm going to pick this time. What am I going to pick? I'm going to do a different one. Um, not that one. This paper pad is from Spotlight last year, I believe. Um, again, this one, actually, I wonder how... That's actually probably a bit distracting because it's got the gloss on it. It's foiled. So let's go find. I should have picked my paper beforehand, didn't I? I think I'm going to go with I can't decide now. That's terrible, isn't it? Too many decisions. I'll see if one of these pictures will work. No, we're going to lose Santa, aren't we? Okay, so we are going to make a decision, and I'm going to go with the bird. I like the bird on it. The bird and the bells work quite well, just for something different, so I don't have two baubles the same. Same process whether you're using this music paper. The reason I like this music paper is it was quite subtle in the background. We're going to make the bird today. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to heat emboss and get this gold embossing look on our piece. So we're just going to use some gold opaque embossing powder. Um, my friend at Hillbilly Scrapping, if you've done any of our in-person classes before COVID hit, um, we team up together and do the classes together. We use all my chipboard and different things and all her other supplies. She has a fantastic online shop. Um, it's great actually the break from the shows. We've both been able to get our websites up and running. So I'm just grabbing some scrap paper here. I'll put it on the back here. So I've got two pieces of A4 scrap paper. So Hillbilly Scrapping sells a lot of these things I use. She sells the Versamark ink pads. She sells gold embossing powder, not this particular brand. This one's an older one, but gold embossing powder works. So I'm just going to put my ink pad, these particular shapes, not so much. But when I heat emboss regular chipboard, it has a bit of um, charcoal that rubs off. This one doesn't because of the type of wood it does. So just be careful if you're using a Versamark clear embossing ink pad or any embossing ink pad, you will get a bit of the charcoal into your embossing pad. So these are about for $5, I believe, $5-ish. And I just designate this one is my cruddy pad just to do my embossing on my chipboard. So I'm just going to stick a bit of, this is, this didn't come from Hillbilly Scrapping. This is um, from a glue pad re-inker. I just found this is getting a bit dry, so I'm just putting a bit of glue on the top. Basically, if you've not heat embossed before, you just need some sort of glue to stick the powder to your project while you're heating it up. I could paint um, matte gel medium on this. I could, I've used a glue stick before. I just find the ink pad, when I'm using really fine stuff like these words, it doesn't tend to goop up a lot of the finer areas. So just on a scrap piece of paper, I'm just dabbing this ink pad all over the top with the glue the glue pad re-inker on it. Take the first sheet away because this has got icky glue on it. Put it on the second sheet of A4 paper, just scrap paper, and we're going to toss on our embossing powder. Now, as you can see, you're not using a lot of embossing powder. Yes, I'm tipping a lot out, but I'll tip 90% of it back in the jar. So I'm just wanting to cover the entire thing. And we'll tip it all out. <laughs> I need to get some more gold embossing powder by the looks of it. So I'm just going to grab my tweezers and pick it up and give it a tap. 
just to get all the excess powder off and as you can see there's a load of powder on my page I'm going to tip it back into my jar and then we are going to heat this up now when you're heating this up you do need a heat tool as opposed to a hairdryer now a hairdryer puts out heat and it puts out air you don't want to put out air for this particular project you just want heat so this is just a tom a uh, tom Tim Holtz heating tool when you're heating heat embossing powder if you've not used it before you want to hold your heat tool in one spot allow these granulated heat embossing powder is basically ground up plastic that melts so it's basically going to go from looking like this to looking like this all shiny and you'll see it starting to turn so you want to heat up the one spot you don't want to keep waving your tool around like this heat up one spot and slowly as you see the, the crystals turn into the gold embossing um, powder you slowly want to move your heat tool around this is not a very loud heat tool so we can have it on I am just going to pick up my piece it's a lot quicker and it heats up a lot quicker when it's not sitting on the table the MDF does take a little bit longer to heat up than chipboard because it is thicker Gonna stop that heat tool for a minute so at the moment you can see the top bit is done but the bottom bit is not so you just continue to move your heat embossing tool around until all the crystals are changed into molten metal don't touch this while just after you've melted it's very hot it's melted plastic you'll burn your finger Trying to grab it in a different spot. Okay, so we'll just give that 30 seconds to a minute to cool down. I'm not going to touch, I'm going to touch the bottom of it, not the top of it. So you can see now that that is, I'm sorry about the shadowing. I'm having awful trouble with shadows at the moment with my filming. So you can see this one is a bit more distressed and bumpy. This one is a lot more smooth. This one has two coats on it, the one with the paper in the background. So to do a second coat, all we do is heat up. Just take my lid off my embossing powder. So all I'm going to do is heat up the embossing powder and then while it's hot quickly sprinkle over it again and this will give us two layers pick it up with my tweezers and dump it off we obviously didn't have it hot enough down one side because none of the powder stuck but that's okay we can heat it up again you can heat up heat embossing powder as many times as you like so I'll just do one side and then we'll come back and do the other side
the more you heat it up, the more you'll get it really smooth and shiny. So I just want to turn around and heat this side because this side didn't pick up much powder. Want to tip it on that side, which didn't get much powder last time. Now the powder's stuck. So doing a large piece like this, you may have to do it in sections, but doing it in sections won't matter because all the powder, every time you put the heat tool near it, doesn't matter if it's three weeks later, it'll continue to melt again. As you can see, I've had some powder still on the paper and it's melted to the paper, but that's okay. That's why I use a second piece of paper when I'm inking. That is looking beautiful. Just being careful not to touch it while it's real hot. I just had a big blob in the A bit, so I just stuck my tweezers in to pull it out. And now I've got our heat emboss ball. Heat embossing is so much fun with chipboard. It's really quick. You don't have to prepare your chipboard at all. You can just go ahead and put your ink on top and then put your embossing powder on top. So now this is nice and cool to touch. We are going to get my pieces of scrap paper out of the way. I'm going to get that out of the way so we can work on work on our scrap bit of paper. So I decided I wanted to have the bird. So I find the best way to get it perfectly lined up and where you want it is to actually stick it on first. Don't worry about cutting it out. And this goes for any piece of chipboard. doesn't have to be a bauble. Any piece of chipboard that you want to put a piece of paper behind, I find I stick it on first, then I cut it out. I'm deliberately not putting um, glue here on the bauble bit, just on the round circle and a bit on the Alexis. And I'm just going to line it up and push it down. So I'm just using the Craft Spot um, liquid glue from Reject Shop. I bought this bottle because I wanted the bottle. Um, the glue is okay. Sometimes I have to glue things on a second time. Um, but usually I use Helmar 450, which is what I use always with Hillbilly Scrapping. It's a fantastic product, a fantastic glue, but the, the tip of the bottle just irritates me. So I want to um, put it into that bottle. So I'm just going to cut around here. Because I didn't glue this bauble bit down, I can just sneak under the back of it and cut it off. Put that piece of paper for another day. Now, when you're cutting these out, you've actually got a hard line of the bauble. You can rest your scissors up against and you can get a really nice clean cut. Oh, I was wondering what the noise was at my feet. It was just my bit of paper falling over. So I can go and get really close to the bauble's edge. And when I come to do, I can do all of that. So when it comes to this side, I do need to put the bauble over the back. And again, using the bauble to rest your scissors on and get, <coughs> get as a guide. So here we've got two of the same ornaments, but two different looks. So depending on what pattern paper you put it on, depending on what look you will get. Just lost the tip of my tweezers. Let me put those back on because I'll stab myself with them. So I quite like those. So again, this one's a bit more subtle to read it. This one, um, I can see it a bit more. That's a bit better. I can see it a bit more in, whoops, in real life than it's a bit shadowy on the um, computer um, on the screen. I will put still photos of these at the end. So you can do simple things like this, or we can go and make <coughs> beautiful very like this so again I could actually put that in the middle with the name and decorate around it so it just depends so I need a set of wings for this I need an open set and that's all the chipboard I need for this set so the first thing we're going to do is actually put some 
crackle paste. So this is Montmartre crackle paste. Hillbilly Scrapping will be getting this in. So basically crackle paste, it's like a texture paste. So it dries raised. So if I run my fingers across the wings, I've got a raised surface there. So it adds a bit of detail to it. On this smaller project, you probably won't see the crackles, but this paste will actually have fine cracks in it when it dries. Um, it was just the one I grabbed to use. So we'll use it. You could use modeling paste as well. You get the bigger cracks when you use it on a bigger surface. So I'm just going to use one of my silicon tools. Just going to grab a little bit of a blob out. Grab one of our new stencil. I just stuck my finger in the crackle paste. Grab one of my new stencils. So this is one of our 6x4 stencils. It has writing on it and diamonds. We want mainly the writing on this one. So I'm going to do half a wing. Oh, sorry. I'm going to do one side of the one wing on one side. So this is just like putting scraping icing through a stencil or scraping icing onto cake. So basically you're just scraping it through the stencil and you don't want any big blobs. Pick it up and we've got some nice writing. Now a lot of this is going to be covered up but we want it in the background. You could do a um, you could use a Christmas stencil, you could use a swirl stencil. This was the smallest stencil I had with the design that would work. Some of my stencils were too big. So you don't want to use a big design stencil because you will actually lose the design of the stencil on a smaller piece. So I'm just going to grab a baby white. When you're using modelling paste on my, um, the stencils, you do need to clean it off straight away. Otherwise, I don't clean my stencils. I'm a bit naughty that way. So I'll just pick the stencil up. Before I clean up my wedge tool, I'm just going to go around the edge and knock off any bits that are hanging over the edge, like these couple of bits down here. Just clean it up a little. And all of this can go back in the jar. So any excess on your scraper. I love these silicon brushes. It's my new love. I've got several of them. In different sizes they're so much fun especially for applying um, modeling paste and matte gel medium and stuff like that they're so easy to clean up so I'm just going to wipe this off and just going to wipe the crackle paste off my stencil straight away as you can see it's got black stuff on it which is permanent ink if I'm using ink or paint I don't clean my stencils I'm very naughty but I do get the crackle paste or it's a big blob of it over there I do get the crackle paste off it pretty well straight away so that it doesn't dry and ruin the stencil. So we just need to give this a heat dry. So again, I'm just going to use the heat tool. I'm just going to pause you while I dry it because you don't need to watch me dry things. Okay, so this is touch dry now. The paints we're going to use today are from Prima Marketing and they're called Opal Magic Paints. So basically when you see Opal Magic on a Prima product, and these come from Hillbilly Scrapping, means it changes colour depending on what colour you start with underneath. So on the jar it says this one turns from coral to teal. So at the moment is the coral colour. That's the actual colour we're going to use. But if I did it on black, it would turn out to be a teal colour. And this one goes green to gold. So again, it's green in its natural state and then it goes to gold in its um, when you paint it onto black. But we're going to use them just straight out of the jar today. They're also metallic paints. That's the reason I like them. So if I was going to paint straight on this, we've got two colours here. We've got white embossing um, crackle paste and we've got the raw chipboard. Now that's going to alter the way that our paints are going to react. So what we need to do is level out this playing field and give it a coat of white gesso. So this is Liquitex brand gesso. You can use any brand gesso. Um, this particular brand, Montmark, makes a fantastic gesso and Hillbilly Scrapping has that and can certainly post it out to you. Um, so gesso is basically a primer or an undercoat. So if you're going to paint a house, you put an undercoat to seal the um, wall that you're painting and then you put... Um, 
you put your top color on top so that's basically what gesso does in our art industry technically um gesso is around to seal canvases so you seal the canvas so you can paint on top but we can seal all sorts of stuff so by putting a thin layer of gesso on here that means when we use our top paints a will be using less of the color i'm also going to do the edges see how they've got brown edges that is a lovely effect to keep but in this instance i don't want to keep it so i'm going to paint the edges as well um so gesso is fantastic to come in uh, to have in your stash it comes in white which is a product we're using at the moment comes in black which is fun to play around with and it also comes in clear which has great uses as well so gesso is a must have in your mixed media art stash do i always use it no do i use it a lot of the time yes depending on what your top color is going to be now I'm just going to sit that up there to dry a bit while I paint my circle ring. So I'm wanting to paint the back and the front and I'm wanting to paint the sides of the wings and this front circle piece as well. These do have a nice burnt edge on them because they are laser cut. So you can keep that natural edge if it ties in with your colour projects. Mine doesn't tie in so I'm just going to paint over the top of it. This MDF is raw wood, so it takes the gesso really, really nicely, and then you've got a nice surface to work on top of. Just trying to not goop up the holes. So if I was to put the Opal Magic Colour Changing Paint directly on this, it would change the colour, and that's not what I'm looking for. I just want the metallic softness of them for this particular project. So I'm just going to put that off to the side and sit it up on my jar to dry and do the other side of this one. So the reason I did the texture paste first is because I wanted to coat it with gesso as well. If I am um, doing a project like this where I'm putting colour or different paints, whether it's the Opal Magic paint that changes colour or other paints, and I'm using texture paste, I will always put the texture paste on first and then gesso over the two, gesso over it. Just so it allows the surface now to have one surface, not two. So the texture paste sometimes will react differently to whatever you put over the top of it. So we want to make sure that we don't have that problem. If you do have that problem, just gesso everything and start again. Gesso is your friend. It covers up a lot of mistakes, which is fantastic. And it's really a must-have in your stash for mixed media. You'll use it a lot. Yes, you could use white acrylic paint as a substitute, but gesso actually has a bit of hidden grit in it. So it actually will bind and grab to wood like this a lot easier than white paint. And it will also grab and bind a lot to plastic and all sorts of things. So it is a good primer to have. Just making sure I'm giving probably about two coats over the front and then just a one coat everywhere else. So I'm just going to dry these off and come back and we will do some more painting. So we are back and my two pieces are totally dry. Now I've got two colours here. So I've got the green gold. That's going to be our base colour. And it's sort of, it's got a metallic shine to it. You can see the shine on the wings. So when I'm painting it, you almost won't see the colour, but it's it's a very, very light mint colour. Um, and then we're going to put some of the pink into the wings or the coral colour into the wings. These paints are so much fun to play with. I actually have on my YouTube channel a couple of videos playing with these paints and showing you how they colour change. I have not used them a lot on lighter colours. I prefer to use them on black. Just, yes, I'm painting the wings as well. I'm talking and painting. So just going to give these a coat. You can sort of see the shininess of them. You can see I haven't done this one. I have done that one. So just painting again all sides and all over. 
I prefer personally bold bright colors but I thought this wouldn't look really nice in bold bright colors um, so just giving it a good paint what I try to like to do is keep my brush strokes all in the same direction so I'm going sort of from the middle of the wing out in a landscape horizontal vertical horizontal I think it is um, I always get those words confused I should at my age know what they're talking about um, so keep your brush strokes going all in the one direction and then it you don't get sort of paint brush strokes in your um, projects this little pot is nearly to the tail end so the paint's getting a little thick but it still works they are water based so you can add a little bit of water to them and they come in a huge variety of colors Again, hillbilly scrapping sells these paints and they are just, they're so much fun. And if you put them on black, you get a different surface. If you put them on grey, you get a t like a half tone of what you would get on black. So it's fun just to experiment with them. Um, and they're metallic, which is really cool. But they have a soft metallic colour to them, which is fun. I am getting this all over my fingers but that's okay so I've done that one just going to sit it up on the jar of the other color so I can do this one here so this one again I'm doing the front and the back a lot of it will be covered up but I really don't know what bits are going to be exposed so it doesn't matter that I'm giving it a bit of paint it's better to do it at this stage than get to the final stage and go, oh, I haven't um, I haven't painted that little bit and then try to get your paints out when you've got your ribbons and everything, ribbons and everything out. So I try to do all the messy stuff first and then clean up and then come and do my non-messy stuff. As I'm painting away um, for this Christmas craft event going every day if you're watching these live wonderful welcome um, if you're watching them on a replay the next bit of information may not be um, pertinent to you but that's okay I am doing a live at one o'clock each day over at my Facebook page scrapbooking and craft a different project each day with Christmas related stuff some will be present some will be art journal pages some will be scrapbooking pages you never know what I come up with so pop over there at one o'clock every day now those lives are recorded so if you can't attend at one o'clock because I know it's during the day and some people do have a real job to go to like a nine to five job uh, <laughs> they are all recorded and eventually will be uploaded to my YouTube channel as well and then at 4 30 every day I'm here in the classroom with a different project there are as huge amounts of beautiful beautiful projects being done in the event this time I've seen the timetable and it looks amazing hopefully I get some time to watch some other people's tutorials just going to dry that off and I will be back okay so we've dried off these pieces I don't know whether you'll be able to see you can see the shine on it the green's hard to pick up with this lighting but trust me it's a beautiful mint green color and I'll take some photos at the end and show you the details so now i want to put some of this coral color so this is the coral teal on my wings but what i'm going to do is actually just do it with my finger so i don't want much on my finger at all so i'm going to take some and just rub it on my um, brown paper just so i get a tiny little bit on my finger i'm just sort of wanting to catch the raised if i can the raised bits and a bit around them just to give it a bit of color I want to sort of go around the edge a little so you can see I've got oh it's really hard to see I do apologize you can sort of see it a bit more there the lighting here is terrible at the moment but I've had to deal with a whole lot of noise trying to tape lately lawn mowers and barking dogs and remote control cars down the street oh it's been terrible so I'm just sort of putting it on and wiping it off so I'm sort of happy with oh you really can't see that at all can you I do apologize um I don't even see it on this one a bit better you can sort of see it on that one a bit better um just sort of putting it on nice and softly I'm not wanting to cover the entire lot of the green 
I'm wanting to see some of the green color that we put on and I'm also wanting to do it with the back the back will be mostly covered but you'll see a little bit of the um, feathers on the uh, the wings on the edge and we just want to finish the back I have a thing about finishing the backs of projects I don't like to live in a plane but a little bit of paint a little bit of effort it's nice just to so just sort of dry brushing oh you can see it there so these are metallic which makes it really really hard to see anyway so I'm not going to put any of the pink on the front frame just to give it a bit of definition from the back Oops. just want to make sure with these pots that you don't get a lot of paint in the threads on your um, pots they do have metal lids so they're quite easy to get off I'm just going to give that a wipe Now because you're putting a really thin layer of paint on it doesn't take very long to dry. We're just going to give it a quick zap. Now we're done with all the messiness so let me go clean my hands so I don't put um, messiness all over the beautiful laces and trims we're going to play with. So let me do that and then I will pop some paper over here so we can continue to... so I've cleaned up and now we're back I've just put some more paper down so in case anything's still wet we don't get it on our beautiful project so again I could bring in it's the wrong colors maybe this one will suit I could again bring in the name and use my name piece but I'm going to make another angel so this is just a postcard I've picked up I don't even know where this come from I found this in my stash and thought oh that'll look nice so again you can sort of position where you want her to go and I'm going to stick her on. So I could use a photo, it's a bit hard with COVID at the moment to think of a project and then go wow I'll just run down the shops and get a photo printed. It's about a two kilometer walk there and about a two kilometer walk back for me to go get a photo printed so I decided to use uh, a postcard. <laughs> For those of you who are new to myself and my business, hello and welcome. I actually have low vision, so I don't qualify for a driver's license. Mean Vic Roads. Um, so for me, just to dash down and print a photo, um, it's, yeah, two kilometre walk down to Kmart and a two kilometre walk back. And if I went to Harvey Norman, it's probably three kilometre walk down and a three kilometre walk back. So I'm just going to cut this out. So this is a little harder to cut because it's a postcard, but it's not that difficult. So I'm just resting my scissors against the um, against the bauble. I'll probably leave it a little bit longer for the glue to grab at home, but that's okay. It's not going to slip around. I find this is a much easier method, as I said um, before when we're doing the first bauble, than trying to trace around it, cut it out, cut it wrong. Um, I always stick my things on first. doesn't matter how messy the back is because we're going to cover that up again. We're just wanting this sort of outer edge to be um, nice. So there we go. It is coming along. So now we want to, what do we want to do? We want to add some lace so unfortunately this lace that I'm using I think it was in from an op shop um, so I can't send you in the direction of where to get this from I was just going to grab something and I've lost a train of thought no I need one of these um, so I like recycling a lot so I will go to op shops and grab lace and doilies and tablecloths and cut them up so let me just find where I started to cut this one up so we're going to use one of these big doilies on the back just to finish it off and it just hides all our dangly bits so i'm just going to cut one of those out don't find these very often now i think all our crafters are cottoned onto them so just going to quickly cut that out don't cut up your grandmother's good doilies <laughs> she might not like you So 
So it's great to be able to recycle and reuse stuff. Um, then going buying, yes, it's great to support the local businesses and the craft businesses, especially at the moment with COVID taking most of our craft shows away from us. Um, but it's also great to go to the op shops and fossic and fine stuff as well. So this is a double um, a double lace in sort of an apricot colour. So I'm just going to measure a piece and cut off a piece that we need and hopefully cut it a tad longer. So we need that and that and we're going to get some dangles and things in a moment out of my bag. So let's do these first. So I find it's easy to put the lace and stuff on before you stick this on. So this is probably one of the last things I will stick on. So what I want to do is with this craft glue is on the back of the wings, I want to just come down this bottom bit and just put sort of a fairly generous amount of glue down at these scallopy bits and then I am going to stick just this top bit of this lace just behind and sort of work it around the scallop. So make sure this is your back bit of your lace onto the back piece of your project. When I come up to the wings I sort of that bit's going to be covered so it really doesn't matter. Um, sort of pinch it to a point and then come back around your wings. Going to work fairly quickly when you put glue all over and hopefully we've cut it the right size. So just give it a, give it a good press down. You can add the lace, you don't have to add the lace. I just decide to be quite frilly today. This is a very different project from me. As you'll see in some of my classes that I've already filmed and coming up in the next few days, I'm not really a frilly fuzzy person, but today I decided to be. So what I like to do is keep checking where things are going to go as I'm going, as I'm making my project. So now we've got to select some dangles. So again, I really can't tell you where I got these things from. I just found them in my stash. Some of them are quite old. So you're just wanting a variety of trims um, and a variety of trims at different sizes. Let's do a bit of rickrack. Um, let's do a bit of this silver. So sort of staying in the silver family. Not wanting to bring gold into it at the moment. We need some of this. So this is just a double flower ruffle. I don't even know where this come from. I went diving in a box in the shed and found some stuff that I hadn't seen for a while. and thought, oh, that'll work, that'll work. Is anyone else like that? It was like Christmas when I opened that box. It's like, oh, did I buy that? Did I really buy that? Obviously, I have too much craft stuff that I've forgotten what I've got. So just slicing this into a single row of roses. Um, and we need some twine. So I've just got a bucket up here I'm just grabbing all my bits from. So just some baker's twine as well. So what I want to do is start laying these out on top of each other. Stay. So I'm wanting all the ends at one end to be the same length, but I'm then wanting this other end, which is our dangly bits, to be all different lengths. I can trim them up in a minute. I'm just going to have a look. Yep, that looks like it makes a good dangle. And then we're going to stick them to the back of our wings. These are made great gifts for the kids to get involved in too. There's no reason why kids can't do this. You don't have to make it as frilly. So I'm just adding my bits. I'll put a big blob of glue there. I'm going to stick a the doily over the top. So we're just wanting these to grab a little bit. Be a great project for the kids to decorate for the grandparents. Oops, I've stuck that one upside down because it's got sticky tape at one end. So the kids could make these baubles their own by painting them all different sorts of colours and sticking a photo in. 
and that would be a lovely little gift for a grandparent for Christmas. Oops, oops, got my finger stuck in glue. So now I'm going to do is put a big blob of glue over the back. This is the reason I use the doily, is it adds to the effect and it also hides all of that. So it goes just. The midpoint of the doily sort of goes to the midpoint between the wings. And we're just going to press it down. Come on, glue. This is why I like the Helmer 450 glue, because it dries really well, but I don't like the tip of the bottle. I can't like everything, can I? So I'm hoping to use up this glue and then tip the other glue into this bottle, because I like this bottle a bit better. Come on, stick down. That's right, we'll fold it over and we'll work on this side. Sorry, just double checking the time. Okay, so now on the bottom of these dangles, to make them dangle, I've actually placed some little, you could put beads on, I've got some little, um, you could place, but oh, let's do buttons on these ones, actually. You could do buttons. What I've used on the first one is actually little, I think these are little buckles, little plastic buckles that I picked up somewhere. Um, but let's do some buttons on this one. Just use the crinkling for a minute. So basically putting something on the dangles just means it adds a bit of weight to the bottom of them and they actually do dangle down. So let's find some buttons. Don't know whether I'll be able to find matching ones because this is sort of a bag of all sorts of buttons and assorted bags, so we'll see. So I'm just going to put a bit of glue on the tip and then stick the button on. Hold it on for a few seconds and hopefully I don't stick my finger to it as well. And I find just having something on, it's another added texture and it adds a bit more interest. Plus it helps the dangles dangle, if that makes sense. Let's go this one on here. So you could use anything. You could use a bead, you could use a button, you could use buckles. Um, basically anything that is cute and will just has a little bit of weight to it. Well, not a lot of weight. You don't want to pull your thing off, but it'll... Um, Let's put three buttons on and then I might use a couple of the dangles as well. Everyone's got buttons in their stash. I'm trying to be good this year and dive deep into my stash and use up my stash with something. So I do apologise if I use something and it's not available commercially anymore. It may be an older paper pad or it may be um, an older embellishment to complement my products. Unfortunately, I'd love to be going out and buying all new stuff, but <laughs> my budget's not that big. This does get a bit fiddly and you do get glue all over your fingers, but what's a good crafter without glue all over their fingers? And I'm going to use use a couple of these. Which way do I open? So these little orange squares and what I did with these ones was just cheated and tied them on because they had a square, like they had a hole through the middle. Just double knotting them so they make sure they stay on and we probably want Let's have a look at what we've got. 
Actually, I've got two at the same height and I don't want that. The great thing about tying is you can easily undo them. I should have checked the height. So when you're doing sort of the dangly fluffy bits like this, all different heights looks better than all straight. Here's my scissors. Let's save that little bit. So I've sort of got them at different heights now. Last couple of things. So again, I don't even know where these come from. I could have even been in my daughter's stash. Oops, don't tell her. We don't tell her. She won't know I raided her craft box. So the last thing I did is I actually took a paper flower, and I do have some more of these here. So these are just paper roses with the wire stems on them. I actually cut the wire stem off. Bend down the excess bit of the wire stem. And what I actually did to give this flower a coordinating look, because if I stuck it on white at the moment, it sort of stands out because we don't have white anywhere else. I grabbed my pink paint, my coral paint, and I painted my flower. So these paints are great for painting flowers as well. Just washing my paintbrush. Just got to be gentle because this is really thin paper. Don't want to coat everything. Just want to give it a bit of a brush just to give the illusion of the colour. I thought we'd done with the messy paints, but we're back with them. So you just want ever so little bit of paint. I actually end up changing a lot of the colours in my stash to suit what I want because I find things never are the same colour or the same shape. Or not the same shape, never the same colour to match my project. So I'm always painting something or always changing something. giving that a bit of a dry. So we're going to stick our bauble on. Again, we'll grab some glue. So I have to glue about halfway up. I don't need glue on the bottom half because it's going to sit down here with the lace. So I'm just lining this bit up here, the square bit of the bauble, just between the wings and just giving it a good press down to hold the glue. We'll add our flower and then our little dangles are done. So wouldn't it be lovely to make a personalised gift this Christmas to any of your relatives? And you put their name on it. The kids would get a kick out of putting their name on something for the grandparents or great-grandparents or aunts or uncles. So just going to hold that flower down for a little bit. This glue is still a little wet. I'm going to be quite gentle with that. So that is our little angel fairy. So again, I could have put the name on it. I just decided to do an angel because I was playing around and found the postcard and thought, oh, they're really cute. So you can make sets of them um, using the same sort of stuff. They are slightly different with the dangles and things, but they come up really nicely. Won't these look beautiful hanging on a tree? Unfortunately, I don't have a Christmas tree up to go and hang it on to show you. So we'll take some still photos of these and pop them at the end. So and some close-ups. I'll go outside and do some photography before the sun goes down. So thank you very much for watching. Just watching my time. I can't read that. Hang on. Hopping up. Yes. <laughs> That's our hour nearly done. Wow, that hour goes quickly. So if you do want to order any of these um, personalised baubles, pop onto my website, which is scrapbookingandcraft.com.au. I will pop that link in the chat bar so you can link straight through to that. Um, 
and I'll also pop some pictures of these up on our Facebook group as well, some of the still pictures from the video so you can get a, quite a close-up look. Thank you very much for hanging out with me for an hour and um, joining in, hopefully. Um, one day you'll join in and make some personalised baubles, which can be quite quick and easy, or you can make something more elaborate. So you can take the project to whatever level you are at with your crafting or however much time you want to sit here and fiddle. So these only took about an hour, um, but I can see these done in so many different combinations in different ways. Certainly like our Facebook group, sorry, like our Facebook page, Scrapbooking and Craft. Um, and I may do some different versions of these coming up to Christmas. It just depends where that time allows. Time at the moment is something I don't have a lot of. <laughs> But these are very cute. I won't hold you up any further. I will let you go and I will see you at 4.30 tomorrow with another fun project and at 1 o'clock live on our Facebook group. So 4.30 every day in the classroom and 1 p.m. live on our Facebook page um, for a live project as well. So lots of Christmassy things to get you really inspired this festive season. Bye for now.